Let's go surprise Omar. Omar doesn't know I'm home. He's in the backyard. Hey! Hey! Hi! Hello! Hi! She's like, I can't even sit still. Yes, so I'm excited. Going. Come here! Oh. Come here! He's just like running back and forth. He just wants her to play with him so bad. He's like, oh my god, play, 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 play. Oh, thank you. Oh, man. Go see your daddy. Come here, Daisy. He's mad at you. <laughs> what? Come here. I don't want that thing. Did you think I left you? Did you think I left you? <laughs> I had your back. Me too. I'm tired. I believe it. I'm very tired. Do you want to talk about how rough it was at the airport? No. I left my headphones in the plane. Then I had to go back through it. Security. And you almost left something else. What the fuck? What else? Mm -hmm. I almost left the paper in the airport. And I'm pretty sure I dropped my passport in LA. I'm almost certain because I think I left it in the lounge. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, you should try this stuff because it's like, really tasty. Technically, then this means I did not smoke weed in Japan. Like, those cartridges, like, yes, that was like. But good this enough. is really high. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I didn't actually get stone. I'm like stone stone. I know. Stony the bear. If this was a history class, we'd be in the stone age. Yeah, so all those cartridges and shit, it's not, that's like a drip, you know what I'm saying? It's like wean you off. And to hold you over. And then the quality got even worse. Like the shit that I took was good, probably the best. And then the stuff that I had to get there was just fucking like whatever. Yeah, it's yucky. This is real weed. I haven't, I guess I really, I haven't felt like this in weeks. Five to be exact. Goodbye, you two bads. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted. We just gotta go out of town more so we can <coughs> countries we can't smoke weed. Start going to places where they chop your hands off, you get caught with weed. Still traveling just do every now and then. Yeah, or just blurred out. Yeah. That's what we'll do is we'll we'll have the Happy Cry logo over it. No the the version where it's edited out and if you want to see the uncut <laughs> vlog you have to buy it. <laughs> I brought some sake back with the juice boxes because yes. I didn't drink them. That's the same. I had the best sake that I had last night. Where? Where'd me you go last night? Me and Elbow went to dinner. Well, we went to Ramen Kimura. We walked down to Ramen Kimura and they were fucking closed. Is that the like, place that you and I like? Yeah. God, God. you've already forgotten everything, Alex. I have, boys. I have brain trauma. And the guy's like, take all the liquids out of your bag. I was like, I got sake in my bag and I bet you he don't say shit. He say shit. Ho. Oh. If you're the LAX guy yelling in TSA, you're a fucking hoe. This dude today, let me tell you, let me tell you, this guy kept saying the same shit over and over, you know, like, make sure your laptop's out of your bed, like yelling it. Hmm. Like, make sure da, da, da. But the line wasn't moving, so he just kept repeating it to the same five people. And then it was just, finally it was like, why do you keep repeating this to the same five people? What the fuck is wrong with you? Are those for a Rocher? Yeah, I don't know what, what, how this just happened, honestly. I gave you your sake and this is just an automatic reaction to just started eating these. <laughs> Didn't even realize what I was doing, to be quite honest about it. Oh, tell him about the joint too, though. You, you, we had this joint, and he couldn't I find. Like it. I was just telling another story though, and I didn't finish it. Oh, did you finish it though? Was it ever finished, Alex? <laughs> Dude, I love weed. I don't give a fuck. I guess nice not to have it too. I guess. Oh my, stop! It's so annoying. Gross. Ah. I'm pounding. He gets that thing so soggy, and then he brings it to you and puts it in your lap. Here, a gift. I mean, you're gonna start going on walks in the morning. Nice. I mean, you know. I want to go with you. Only if you're awake. Sharp and early. What time is your sharp and early? Five. You're going to give a five? Thirty. You're going to give a five thirty? Yep. New regiment. New lifestyle. Japanese lifestyle. You didn't wake up at five thirty. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're happy, huh? So mm. happy daddy's home. Hey. Hey. Oh, look at this big belly. Look at this big belly. <laughs> Did you think you were rolling the roost because I was gone? Hmm? Hey. I feel 
Where's this fucking pizza at? Though? It'd be so funny when you get on this and the story ends in the middle of whatever you're talking about and we're like, oh, thank you, we're done yeah, talking. I still have no idea. I feel like there's like three stories that didn't end at all. I met Forrest Whitaker at the airport in the lounge. <laughs> what? Yeah. Is this a real story? Yeah, no, straight up. Flight, and he was in the lounge to my left. And we made eye, we made eye contact. That's a funny joke, but we really did make eye, we did make eye contact. And I was like, literally stopped walking and went, oh, Forrest Whitaker. I was like, I'm gonna keep it low key. I like your shit, dog. Ghost dog is my shit. <laughs> and I just walked away. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And he's eating a muffin. What kind of muffin, yeah? Oh, I don't know. That's and fascinating, And then too. I forgot that he was in Black Panther. I started thinking about it. I was like, what is that? He thing? is in Black Panther. But I still don't know what story I didn't finish, but I did finish that one. You are such a weirdo. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> Hey! <laughs> you so happy? Yeah, my socks are not wet. Nice. It's crazy. It is Monday. Technically, I'm not vlogging today. But the last couple of days... Oh, man. Oh, your boy is tired. I mean, I'm so tired that I haven't even unboxed shit. I got packages. My address is on both sides. I got packages that have been sitting here. You can see my address on everything. Anyway, I got packages that have been sitting here that I haven't even opened yet. So, so tired I haven't even unboxed. My room is destroyed since I've been home. This was all clean. Alex had it all super clean for me, but I've been drawing pretty nonstop. So, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been drawing, but I've been waking up super early and I can't stay up during the day. So I'll wake up at like 4 a.m. and then I'll usually crash somewhere in the daytime. Like we were gonna go to a movie the other day and I was all gun ho And then like 10 minutes before we went, I was like, dude, I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> no real like sleep schedule right now. And I just can't catch up. So I don't really know what to do. But one thing I've decided to do is, so I walked a bunch in Tokyo. I really enjoyed it. I usually don't really, I hate walk. I don't hate walking, that's stupid. I love walking, walking is great. I don't like treadmills, just to like jump straight forward. I can't stand a treadmill, it's like the worst thing in the world and it really turned me off from like exercise walking. What I am gonna do though, because it's practical, it makes total sense, is to include walking in my regular life instead of using a car just because I have one or an Uber just because I have one, I'll walk. I used to walk a lot more downtown. I don't walk so much here, so it's easier to like pack on pounds and not move your body and fuck around. So uh, I like to eat. I like to eat a lot of different food. So I'm gonna counterbalance that more by walking more. One thing I learned in Tokyo is that my ass needs to walk more. And just because I have the infrastructure to not walk doesn't mean I need to be a fucking sheep and just drive. You know what I'm saying? Sheep drive. Sheep drive, you fucking sheep. I'm just kidding. You know what I mean. Anyway. Um, ugh. Oh, what else has been going on the last couple of days, Omi? Ugh. Hanging out with Omar, who's just ready to play all day. All day plays. Omar. I know. I know. I know. Watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. I've never seen it before. I started with season six. I know that's ridiculous. No. Well, that's pretty much it, man. Like, just kind of like trying to get back in the swing of things. Ern is not back yet. He should be back the first. We're headed to New York on like the 7th. JC's opening the UN. There's a lot of shit going on, dog. Our drops, uh, wait, Mecca Gold and the friends and family order is getting ready to ship. We got all that to deal with. It's a lot of busy, crazy work just the last couple of days. And today being the first business day and I'm about to fall asleep standing here. What I'm gonna do to add insult to injury is I'm gonna walk to the dispensary now, which is 2.7 miles away. So we're gonna walk there and back, get six miles in get lunch, and then probably pass the fuck out. We'll see what happens. I said I'm not vlogging today, which technically I'm not. I'm not taking this camera with me on my walk, but maybe I'll check in with you when I get back. Maybe I'll check in tomorrow. I don't know. Right now, your boy is just like fog head. Fog head, crazy. Fog, fog god. What are you doing? That's not, that's attached to the ground. You have not thought this through. We're we gonna go for the other one now. Oh, you broke it. I don't think you're gonna get the other one. Oh, oh God. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Jesus. 
I'm being quiet because Alex is sleeping, but it's really early. It's uh, six, but 6.30. So last night, I don't know. I ended up falling asleep until six o'clock. I got up and me and Alex went and got dinner around seven. We had dinner at a ramen place here. <laughs> I got ramen and gyoza, which is pretty hilarious. It was pretty good, actually. It's obviously not Japan good, but it was pretty good. Hey, Omar. Good morning. But I totally forgot to tip them because in Japan you don't tip. So I completely forgot. Like walked out, like handed the dude money, handed my money back. I like smile at him and shit. I'm like, yeah, bye, see you later. I probably left and he's probably like, motherfucker. So I'm gonna walk back up there and tip them, but they don't open till 10. But I'm gonna go ahead and go walk somewhere so I can get, I can't do this in the middle of the day every day. So 6 a.m. nobody's up. Maybe I'll go walk for a couple of hours. I don't really know where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find something, so. Uh, yeah, that's the plan this morning. Then we'll come back and unbox some shit. Clean this mess of a desk. That's the plan so far now. Yeah. Good morning. Nice and gloomy out here. I'm definitely not bringing the camera for these walks, so the iPhone will have to suffice. Plus, like, really vlog walking. I mean, how much shaky camera and bad audio do you really want in your life? Well, we've been back for a little bit, like 20 minutes. Had to rest for a second. It's time to organize this room because this is pure fucking chaos in here currently. Straight enough for today. Books stacked. Whew. Uh, all right, so straighten the house up or straighten this room up enough for me so I can start working. Things have been a little chaotic since I've been home. So leaving the country for five weeks and really my house for six. Yeah, a lot, a lot can happen. A lot did happen. I think it's all under control. Um, everything's good. It's hard. It's hard to leave home for that long and like know that everything's gonna be chill. And it seems like everything is chill. I have a bunch of shit to handle. I gotta register the Tesla, which I completely forgot about. <laughs> Um, we obviously have the business, the shirts, the drops, all this going on. Ern is still out of town, so he's still on the road with Coheed, and then when he gets back, we have to regroup. We're headed to New York for JC's UN opening. He's opening another Urban Necessities in New York City. I'll be there for that. Going to see my other, my homie Jay, who's in jail upstate a little bit of buffalo so i'm in new york gotta go see him i may do some tattoos in new york i really don't know yet i haven't really decided and things are crazy so i may take like a couple of people maybe i just i really don't know i honestly don't want to deal with a tattoo shop i don't want to deal with um just dealing with a bunch of tattoo shop stuff and like organizing but we'll see home with the pups which is great on this new walking kick, cause I can't, I literally wake up in the middle of the night and my body is like, go walk. So we're walking, we're talking, we got sneakers, we got boxes. The trip was amazing. I know that people probably have like a hundred million questions and I have a hundred million answers, I'm sure. Uh, we'll have to just save that. Maybe we'll do like a Q and A, like a Tokyo question and answer session or something. Cause I don't even know where to start. I get a lot of questions already, no idea where to begin. What else? So really like this week is just reorganizing for me. In Japan did a lot of soul searching, mind melting, fucking walking and just absorbing as much as I can as far as inspiration goes, colors, shapes, gods, I mean fucking everything. Japan was amazing. I, I really enjoyed traveling and vlogging. Kind of brought up some like interesting shit with my head because you know in Japan I would like get up and find things to do, like search out new things to do which I don't do at home. So as cool as Japan is and as cool as everything that I did was, that also had a lot to do with my effort being put forth. And I realized that I don't put forth that much effort in exploring my own culture. Or not that America really has a culture, but like culture of America. I don't I don't take the time to explore, at least don't take the time to explore all these restaurants, different things that are going on in town, like a polar opposite. It's a completely different um, lifestyle and culture altogether, but it did make me feel a little bit lazy as far as my own exploration of my own surroundings. So I think that's got some, you know, so moving forward, I would like to force myself to maybe be more enthusiastic about um, what is around me as well as traveling around the world. Because obviously travel is fun, exhausting. I miss my dogs. I miss being home, but I also really love just being all over the place. So trying to find that balance. I'm sure we'll hit somewhere else international soon. I'm thinking like Dubai. I got invited to Bali. So I mean, like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that was really fun. Tokyo served its purpose, answered 
questions, a lot of new questions, and a lot of uh, stuff that I feel like I need to do, which is good. It's inspiring. So that was the point. Mission accomplished. Um, yeah, I could I could talk about Japan for for a week, so we're gonna skip over it. Thanks everybody for watching. It was a really fun vlogs. Frequency of the vlogs obviously had to be different, which I kind of enjoy. So the frequency may change just in general, but I don't like making plans either. So just stick with me. We'll be doing regular awesome shit. Speaking of awesome shit, shoes. We haven't talked about shoes in forever. There's been so much drama with shoes. Not really drama, just like real shit. Like I'm just uninterested in a lot of stuff. You know, if we'll, we'll touch on Jordan and Nike, like obviously you guys know I don't fuck with it, whatever, whatever. Everything that's down the pipeline right now or that we've seen, all the hype, all the, like my Twitter jokes, Twitter mentions, it's Nike Jordan's doing the same thing it was doing. It's mostly retros. S somehow Tinker thought it was a good idea to chop two shoes in half and glue them together and give it as a gift and I know that that shit's just for internet giggles, but goddamn, complete fuckery going on in the shoe world. It's not just limited to Nike. Goddamn, did you see that new Nike slip-on thing? That MC rap looking bread? Oh, God. It's like stale bread. Nike's doing whatever it does, and that's cool. Whatever. I mean, it's not cool, but it's cool if you think it's cool. And then Adidas, you know, like, these are the only two brands I'm going to talk about, because let's just be honest, the rest don't really hit the radar, honestly. I mean, they do cool stuff here and there, but it's not who we're talking. It's not who we're checking for. And I don't wear those brands either, so I really can't. I don't pay attention. Adidas has definitely done their share of fucking up, too. I can't say enough about the Free Hiker. I cannot say enough about it. It's my favorite fucking shoe of all time at this point. I cannot stop wearing them. In Japan, I try to put on an Ultra Boost to go walk, and I'd immediately just go put on. If I was walking more than a mile, the Free Hiker was coming with me. They dropped a Lighthouse colorway, which was supposed to be exclusive to sports shoes, the yellow and brown colorway. I don't know that that's true, because it's also on Dick Sporting Goods. Now that's a low key spot. Like obviously everybody's like, what the fuck, that's not hype. I don't give a fuck. That colorway is fire. It is Bruce Lee as fuck. It is perfect. It's my color yellow. I need it. I love it. I ordered it. It's on the way. Oh, I also ordered the blue Kith ones off StockX because I finally was like, fuck it. I might as well get those too. That's an L for me because I should have just got them at release. Obviously the black pair I've just like destroyed. I loved them. They were great. Some people are tripping because they can't find the Kith ones. I get it. The Kith ones definitely have like the offset colors that make it pop. But for the price, if you can't find it and you're just looking for the comfort, there's like so many colorways coming. There's a regular black pair. There's this pair. There's a gray pair. There's a green pair. I've seen like 10 different pairs. So hopefully I'll have more insight. Hopefully I'll get to go see the T-Rex division here in Boulder or Colorado Golden. They haven't got back to me yet. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, T-Rex is fire. But aside from that, everything else, not everything else, but a lot of shit has been really just kind of like, ugh. Some shit is like, ugh. Some shit is like, ugh. Some shit just makes me really mad. But I don't even know really where to start. So let's start with good shit because everybody likes good news. The good news is Pharrell and Adidas hooked me up because they love me. Shout out to BBC. Shout out to Mimi. Shout out to Pharrell. Shout out to the people at Adidas that fuck with me. And shout out to the people at Adidas that don't fuck with me. This is a fire shoe. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people probably love it. A lot of people probably only love it because it's friends and family. I honestly was kind of unaware of this shoe. I saw Wex post it. I will say it comes with, damn, four sets of laces, which is all. Uh, your friends and family, you get laces. Green set comes with it. This is obviously all hodgepodge together, different colors. You got little hits from just different Pharrell drops this year. You know, you got the sort of, when they were calling it the Afro pack, this looks like the inside of the Afro pack. They changed that to solar. This whole thing is called the solar, which is why I assume they put that on there. You got the red solar colorway that sort of has like a silvery sheen to it. I'm gonna assume is also a reference to the Chinese New Year one. Um, I don't have any clarification, but the real standout of this Hugh Hugh is the, the maroon that is made up uh, on the toe box and the heel, which is the same color as the original Friends and Family NMD. Which no, I do not have, because that shit, one, I've never seen my size, and two, uh, I'm not paying $9,000 for shoes. That's still not something that we do over here. Yeah. I don't have those, but I do have these, and these are sick. Some people were saying that they thought I didn't like the Solar. But I do. I do. I want to see what the dogs got. I was surprised that I like these. Not this specific, but the Solar uh, Hue. Basically like an Ultra Boost with some little modifications, a little bit cheaper. The features on this shoe also see on the Terex Free Hiker. So certain things that they've done like this, uh, like thinning out the boost with this other, I mean, I don't, I guess that's another midsole. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what you would technically call that. The mid midsole, upper midsole, top sole. 
Top sole security. Anyway, uh, yeah. So the improvements that they made technically in the shoes are more comfortable. Ultra Boost is still really comfortable, but it's silly to think. I mean, I would hope that we could improve upon it. And by we, I mean Adidas. I think that's where a lot of shit got lost. They kept putting out new shoes with improvements, improvements, but uh, it didn't translate in the fashion part. Functionally, I think they've done what they can with Ultra Boost. Um, they tinkering, no pun intended. Adidas kind of fucked up putting Boost on every single model that they could have put in you know, with the Stan Smiths and just like slapping on everything. Seems like they somewhat regrouped and are trying to use it for functionality again. I don't really know why they went off on the did what they did, but they did. So yeah, there's a lot of things they've done that I don't quite understand. I fuck with the shoe, and I fuck with the fact that uh, they fuck with me. So shout out to Pharrell and family for getting me these. It is much appreciated. I will wear them. Okay. All right. So I got a couple of pairs of shoes, and I actually got a couple of these uh, Columbia hoodies. Oh. In Japan, <sighs> in Japan, not a lot of clothing fit me. Barely any. Especially these hoodies in Colombia. Colombia and Japan's on another fucking level, dog. Like, another fucking level. Off-tone Colombia hoodies, which they did not have in my size, and it was Japanese sizing. Shout out to fucking Fat Kid Deals, because one day he saw me tweeting back and forth about them, and hit me with a link, and these were available on REI for half off. They were $40 a piece. $40 a piece for the fleece. Dog, don't sleep on it. Can't sleep on it, because it's soft. Yeah, so I copped all three of them bitches. Like, I bought Alex the pink one in Japan. It was like 75 bucks. I got this one for 40 bucks. And then I got all three of them sons. But yeah, them shit. Like, Colombia and Japan, dog. They're color blocking. It's just like, unreal. We got the pink one. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You would be correct. That one's not as thick as the Kith one, though. It's a little thinner. It's not the same exact hook. And we got this crazy camo, giraffe camo, which I was on the fence about. I was like, I don't know. This one's a little wild, but for snowboarding, it'll be fucking fine. And it honestly might be all right in the street. If you think, if camo reminds you of a bait, then you have a problem. It's a mental problem. We got that one too. The whole fucking rack we got for like $120, probably even less. Free shipping. I don't even know, man. They might even pay me to wear it. They haven't. Columbia, if you want to pay me to wear it, be my guest. Another pair of shoes we got here. Oh, I know what these are. These are from StockX. Uh, on it. Hella sell. And if you have been here for a long time, if you're a long time listener, first time caller, you will know that I got this shoe when it came out in Japan. Funny enough, I think it was Japan. It may have been China. I think it was Japan. But I was getting a pair to review back in the day because I used to cop that shit before anybody. I was the only one out there copping the heat. You know what I'm saying? On the street copping the heat for my feet but they didn't have my size well at least i didn't think and then the homie sent me i was like getting like a 10 or 11 whatever size they had he ended up finding me the only 12 and a half really in japan which was fucking crazy so i ended up buying thought i was getting like a nine and a half 12 and a half showed up i was hype i got the glowing dogs it was a flex for a while because nobody had them especially not a big size and then adidas has dropped you know one thing adidas did this year which i've seen this video going around i haven't watched it all together there's some video about what how adidas fucked everything up i i I skimmed through it for a second and I stopped. I think you have to look at it on a different level, especially from a product level. And I said it before, like we're looking at shit from a completely like scoped in perspective. Like shoes, we are fucking nerds about it. Like we're scoped in, we're expecting like home runs every time. When we see a new silhouette, we're expecting it to be straight crack. Have very little margin for there to be any kind of like fuckery, you know? And if there is fuckery, we clown it and then eventually accept it and wear it and get in line for it. At least some of you do. Ugh, we're all guilty of changing our minds sometimes. But this shoe in particular was not anywhere to be found. It only really released in Japan, a lot like the chocolates. And um, But Adidas this year, they just, it's like they went with the ace in the whole thing. It's the same thing that really just kind of pissed me off about Nike back in the day and Air Max. And I remember specifically one thing that really turned me off was when the infrareds just kept redropping. Like infrareds went from being a pretty like coveted shoe at some point to this like being 
every fucking where, like all the time. It just like wasn't special anymore. And I know that's weird. Not in the sense of like it needs to be rare to be special. It doesn't have to be rare, but let time do its thing. Like release the shoe in a good amount of numbers. Let people who want it get it. But let time take its place so that we can enjoy it by looking back on it. Or like, hey, I have one of these on ice. I still got to pull it out. That's what I think drew me back into shoes is the small bashness of Ultra Boost. The fact that it was like kind of moving forward and they were switching shit up and they were changing shit up. And I like some of the shit they're doing. Like we're getting some 1.0 stuff again and it seems like they're kind of like not fucking around too much but some of the shit they're doing is complete fucking around. The CBC shit that they did, which we will touch on in a minute, it was a lot of drama on Twitter and all over the fucking internet I'm sure. We'll, we'll touch on that in a second because it's more relative later but some of the shit they're doing with like dangling is not cool and I think last year in the fourth quarter fiscal quarter uh Adidas thought we'll just fucking put out all this stuff that we know are sure bets and we'll drop it and that just like that that didn't work and I, I know some people got what they wanted for sure a lot of people got what they wanted so it worked in that aspect but for hype it definitely turned a lot of people off some people are just built off of that some people really 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 want hype shit them re-releasing the 1.0s not really a big deal like to me that didn't really matter to me like i said i got to get these these aren't 1.0 but i got to get these in my size for once so we filled in some gaps that I even appreciate. So I have no problem with the re-releases, the retros, whatever. And then the Jordan fans are like, what the fuck, Teddy? Like, if they do this again and again and again and again, actually, if they do it even one more time, I'd be like, all right, guys, what the fuck? Like, we really don't need to keep doing this. We don't need to keep getting the same Ultra Boost. Even though I don't appreciate for, I haven't, I don't love these new colors of the Ultra Boost. 2019. I saw some in the wild in Japan. I have to say that I do think that they look good on feet. Uh, one thing I can't stand about is the fucking cage. A black pair, I can't really see the cage from a distance, so it looks okay, but that cage is killing me. It's just killing me. But some of the stuff they're doing on 1.0 is really just... <sighs> Um, and I'm, you know, and it's like, and Adidas is doing what they're doing. Like they're, I don't think that they've completely destroyed it. I think that, uh, I think that that's like a little whack. I think that they could have given people this shit way before. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But yeah, um, I think in this day and age, relying on the old product and re-releasing it, you will fill in some gaps. Some of your hardcore fans will definitely eat and will be happy and will maybe even get the shit on sale. But the real problem again with Adidas, has been, in my opinion, a lack of good marketing, uh, any kind of real like transparency in what the fuck is going on, you know, like at all. Things are just seem so scattered and disconnected. The slight from Nike, Jordan, whatever, is kind of shitting on their own legacy, like chop shopping their own shit. And the same thing, Adidas is doing the same fucking thing. It's like they're following the same footsteps. And they don't have to. Like, they have creative people who work in their company and you can make some fire shit like collaborators and so there's certain shit that they obviously can do and do it well but man when they miss they fucking miss a real big miss for me well, well the first real big miss is the cbc which if you don't know is the celebrating black culture uh the cbc in white that was canceled is the biggest miss of all time for adidas possibly i will never understand. I understand the concept behind the shoe. Like, if you saw the Killer Mike explanation, really good explanation. It's honestly exactly what Diddy said when I talked to Diddy about it. it makes complete and total fucking sense. But without context and inside the political scope of the world that we live in, which is a reality at this point, it is eerie fucking responsible to release anything like that without, like, it's okay that some people might take what you're doing wrong. Like, that's, I'm not, that's totally fine. But you can't release or let some, or if something gets leaked even, you know that shit's good. If you've seen something that's leaked, it's time to release information. You cannot sit there and let a dialogue happen and a, no, a new narrative get created while you say nothing. And that's exactly what happened, and that's exactly what Adidas does anyway. There's never any fucking clarification on anything. I, hold on, I've gotten ahead of myself, because I didn't even like, show you the shit that I got in my size, the Glow in the Dark Ultra Boost. 2.0. So I have the 12 and a half in there and I need to get rid of it. Um, I'll be getting rid of those soon. This is my first pair of like from the restock or whatever, the retro, the retro stock. You know, if you want to celebrate any culture, 
then celebrate that culture in a proper manner. Involve people. I honestly feel like there should just be sectors and having people who are in the fucking urban community creating and distributing and marketing have it scoped in so that the people who know what the fuck is going on can represent the company much better. I don't feel like I'm going to give enough power to the people that work there. The power for any company is with the creators that, like, they should be flexing product and be able to flex things that are going on. Everything's still so secret and released so weirdly and blah, 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 blah. A lot gets lost in translation. That CBC shit, without there being like clear, clear representation and there being a story and you show like, just showing me who is behind this and what their objective is, that's all that we really need. That's all I need. I don't want to speak for everybody else. That's all I need. It's like art to me. I don't have to like the shit, you know what I mean? And it could be offensive, that's fine. But I do somewhat expect there to be some sort of explanation of sorts. Like you can't leave everything up to fucking imagination. Like I wanna know what, you're, what you were trying to achieve. Artists get a little bit more liberty. They don't have to explain everything. Generally artists will, but companies, when you're when you're dancing on that line with black culture and black culture is anything but fucking celebrated in our world, I don't think that like that's I don't think that's cool. And so a lot of people will jump to the well they did the you know they they got rid of the all white one and they did the black and purple one. That shit's a dub too, cause I don't fucking have any idea why that fucking thing is included. The CBC, the other two are basketball shoes that are based on, and they said the colorway is based off the Jazz Halls. I think the whole thing's based off the Harlem colorways too. I can't remember everything, so I might be screwing that up, but that's the gist of the collaboration, the release, whatever you want to call it. Ultra Boost has nothing to do with that. They just like threw the Ultra Boost in there. It's an okay looking shoe. I don't hate the shoe color. But I do think that it's like underneath, when you fly it under a different flag and you're trying to say that it represents something that it really, and I don't see how it does. I mean, does that money get allocated to something different? When you buy those shoes, does that money go somewhere different? Like, are we putting the money into like black culture in any way? Or is it just like, we're just celebrating it and we wear the shoe and whatever, what have you. I, I just think it's a weird thing. Like, it makes me feel weird. You know, and I talked to Jay about it a bunch and he thought it was weird. <laughs> so I just, yeah, it just makes me feel weird. And I know it's hard for people to talk about race. And yes, I'm aware that I'm white. So it's not a shoe for me. And that's exactly what the fuck I'm saying. He's like, I just don't understand why, why I don't get it. I won't buy either of those shoes. And I think that's a huge L for Adidas. And anyone who tried to jump out a window and be all like, oh, there's no controversy on this side. It's not really for you to decide if there's controversy. Other people are obviously offended by it. That's all that really matters. And the fact that the Adidas had to retract the shoe obviously shows you there was a fucking controversy. So it doesn't really matter, I guess. No, does it? Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about it because fuck that shoe this shoe which I was also getting kind of heated about because there was no explanation it was just people were calling it a Chinese New Year because it says Chinese New Year on here CNY which technically it's not a Chinese New Year it's made to represent Chinese New Year colors are for good fortune Chinese symbol on the side of the shoe representing good fortune it actually means like foo something but this shoe is based to celebrate Chinese New Year it's like a Chinese New Year themed Eddie Huang kitchen signature model you know what I mean like he made it Chinese New Year ish but it's technically not the Chinese New Year that we're used to we get Chinese New Year's and this year's was like the worst like Adidas totally just was like yeah we don't fucking care apparently it's year of the pig um, this shoe has a panda on it which I do believe is Eddie Huang's company so um, yeah I did get these at first I was gonna pass because there was no explanation. I was like, all right, calling it the Chinese New Year. It has nothing to do with Chinese New Year on it. Like, what the fuck? And then Adidas released like a huge, long, not huge, long, but a nice, well thought out and typed out explanation explaining everything on the shoe. So I thought for nothing else, I'll at least grab them. So I was like, bro, the only shoes we've gotten from you guys in 2019 as far as Ultra Boost is some Game of Thrones bullshit. All of those are not happening for me. I don't care. And don't tell me to cut the fucking flags off because if every if I want to be a shoe customizer, then there's a bunch of shoes I could wear if I wanted to chop them up. But I don't want to chop them up. I want to buy the shoes and wear them. So far, it's been Game of Thrones, which isn't out yet, but they're scattered all around. The CBC, which is like, they literally, the white one was literally the soul box. <laughs> Basically, oh, let's just drop the soul box again. Let's just make it offensive as shit. 
and uh, make it white. No big deal. Usually go hand in hand. The, uh, and then we get a 1.0 that's black and purple under the same fucking ridiculous thing. This shoe, which was another 1.0, and I was like, another theme? Why can't we just get like a new 1.0? Like, why can't we just get, why can't we get that? Why are they dangling? Once I got the explanation, once I saw that new materials, blah, 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 it made a little more sense. I still wish if they're going to release 1.0 and 2.0, because apparently there's like 2.0s coming now too that I've seen leaks of. I don't pay attention to leaks like I used to though. I'm way, I'm way too busy. I have seen some stuff here and there. Like I said a couple years ago, I think they'll just continue to make 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 2019, and they'll continue to do what they do. Very obvious they're using the 1.0 is more of a lifestyle sector now. This shoe, even though functional, most people are gonna wear as a, uh, you know, not a beater. But here's the shoe. This is actually my first time getting a look at it. Everybody on the internet has been going nuts about the quality, saying it's the best Ultra Boost in years. The little dust bag. It's a nice little touch. Little barbecue. Chinese barbecue boys. I mean, the le yeah, these are leather. Someone... <laughs> The leather's okay. I mean, I'm not like a leather snob, so I don't care, but it's not, it's it's nice enough, yeah. Suede is nice on the tone. Got that soul box suede. That's nice, the stitching in the bag. It's like a little pleatherish for sure, though. <laughs> it's not SBB quality, that's for sure. These are cool. I mean, they're cool. This little guard, these are like, actually, I think this is probably not like leather, leather, because it's supposed to hold up in a kitchen. Like, it's nice, but it's not so nice that you can't fuck it up. That's what it seems like to me. Like, it's a little durable. The gold inlay is a nice touch too. And it's cool, it kind of looks like pork because it's got like the red and the pink. So that's fire. And the gold hits are fire too. Like, wow, ah, wow. Ah, I like that. These are sick. These are sick. I like these. I like them more than I thought. But yeah, I think that, that those guards are just like the toe guard and the cage. I think that's uh, to help in the non fucking up of the shoe because it looks pretty fancy even though you're gonna fuck this up this gets wet it's game over this is supposed to have a non-slip grip for kitchen so you, this be the first ultra boost that i'm aware of has actually stated that you could wear it in a kitchen or that it has a non-slip non-slip joint so yeah these are sick i haven't tried them on yet but i'm sure they're true to size a lot of people like to go back and forth with sizing i'm still gonna stick with the fact that a size 13 is the best option for me it's fairly rare that I need a different size. And then these kind of different laces, some black and barbecue laces. This says real leather though, you know? Nothing like a real leather tab to confirm it. And the panda on the tongue is probably my least favorite part. I don't know why, that, I don't know. I honestly think that this would look way sicker if they just put if they just put the Chinese symbol on there, it would look way sicker. Whatever, I didn't make the shoe, so that's it. That's it, it's been a while. It's been a while since we did that, that was fun. That was fun to talk shoes, it's fun to talk shit, it's fun to get it all out. You know, you only tweet so much. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna cut the day short because I really have, I'm still recovering a little bit from this uh, jet lag, which I think I've pretty much done good today. Like I think I'm gonna be able to stay up and not take a nap today. So that's positive. I'm gonna order some fucking food because I'm starving, so fucking hungry. So I'm gonna eat. And then I have a lot of shit to learn. Like basically in Japan, Toshi took me to a bunch of art stores. I bought a bunch of art supplies, I bought a bunch of books. I'm testing out all these different sumi papers that exist to figure out which kind of sumi paper I want to paint on but um so this is taking me a while and it's like hard to really vlog because it's a lot of trial and error and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and I have to figure it out because <laughs> I had this big roll of paper somewhere and I want to start a big painting on that I really want to learn how to paint I guess more traditionally like a Japanese master or whatever like and I want to paint huge because I don't feel like well, actually, I know I'll never be able to have a gallery show of huge paintings or die and have a room full of huge dragon paintings or sell a, you know, million dollar painting to some fucking hotel of a dragon eating a tiger, like, unless I paint them. Moving forward, uh, I'm really going to focus more on, like, making art, which I've been gearing towards a lot. There's obviously going to be a fuckload of stuff coming for merch, like trying to figure everything out and where my place is and if I'm going to dive further into clothing manufacturing or dive further into creating. I think right now I just need some time to create. That's where I'm at after coming back from Japan. I really want to lock myself away and just like make, 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 but I also want to explore because I think I'm trying to find this balance. So welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the new journey, because that's where we are. But that's the day. I'll see you probably tomorrow. Maybe not. Maybe we skip a day. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Peace! Actually, I'm going out to lunch with Mike the Compass tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. I'm sure of it. Peace!